something like a teaching and it said quite a lot, phrased as the greatest mystery or the, the problem, it's, maybe you should pay attention to it. If you're a big believer of Ramana or something, Ram Maharshi, because he says this a lot in so many different ways. It's the same feeling though. You want to get, you want to do it? Anyone who we're missing? No? Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, is it on? Oh, it's on already. Yes. All, right. all right, so the one we usually use. Yeah. And why do we do it? Because why do we do it? Why do we do it? I ask myself what an old song. Uh, why did I do it? Why did I do it? <laughs> because it's important in a way, especially if you're involved with what's called spirituality because it sort of tells you that the direction you're going has been sort of bushwhacked and it's being used to reinforce the reality of what you're trying to make unreal by your practices, yes. And so there's like no way out because you're, you know, you're the pivotal thing, yeah? So you wanting to get out gives a reinforcement of the thing that you think you're in and you can't break that when that, that equation's in place, yeah? As long as you're in it, yes? So he says, so the one we used to use a lot, and other people have sent me others, but uh, too hard to find their own texts. But Ramana would say there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. So the non-existent thing, I'd say, is the body. Body represents it. So animation, something's animating the body, and, uh, but the body doesn't exist in and of itself. It's a non-existent thing. It, yes? Yeah. That, that, you know, if you thought the blender was doing the blending, take the plug out, it's not going to be blending anything. Yes? So the electricity is the animating thing. And so that gives seeming existence to the non-existent thing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the pre-supposing. So pre implies time, right? Before, after, stuff like that. Pre is an important word. Why would he use that? Or how they uh, translated it. He could have just said a supposing of a non-existent thing, but he said a presupposing because that, it captures the little trick in time, yeah? So there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing. So when it's supposed, it presupposes itself, yeah? So let's say, uh, you supposedly saw Stanley on Wednesday, and that immediately presupposes Stanley was on Saturday. Yeah, it presupposes it back. Yeah, yeah. So you're presupposing Stanley now, but the Stanley you're presupposing is historical. Oh, he was there five days ago. Yes, and therefore, and he's probably going to be there five days later. Yes. So this, so there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing that wants to get salvation for the non-existent thing. Yeah, because usually if there's an identification as non-existent thing, there's gonna be ills and troubles. And like in Buddhism, they call it dukkha, you know, a vague malaise or dissatisfaction because you're not that really, yeah? I mean, I would imagine a sheep's life would probably be dissatisfying for any lion that was taking itself to be a sheep. Only because, not that the sheep life sucks, but it's a lion, you know? So a lion, that would be a big forgetting for it to be really happy, joyous, and free as a sheep. It would probably be a lingering little, what, you know? I don't feel like I should be chew chewing cud and shit like that, or I shouldn't be used for sweaters, I should kick some ass, you know? There would be some vague rememberings of its nature that would cause it not to feel so great as a sheep. You know, it just, you know, how it creeps up on you when we're here, yeah, yeah. So the presupposing a non-existent thing, so let's say that's the body in this case, and then wanting to get salvation for the non-existent thing, for the non-existing thing itself creates an irritable restlessness and discontentment because it finds itself in time, and it also doesn't have any bona fide uh, condition, they're all contrived, they're volatile, yeah? So conditions come and go, so you feel really good at 9, at 9, 10, you could feel terrible, yeah? And some people, it's so extreme, they're in Nirvana, 901, and 910, they're in Armageddon, you should be suspicious when, you know, quickly, so fast. So this idea of relying on that, it's unreliable, 
you know, you get everything together and you feel great, and then the rain, you know, perfect picnic, but then it rains. You know, there's always these unintended things going on that keeps you on busy managing because you'd like to reach a certain level of okayness, usually pr pretty much given to it by programming and conditioning. Yeah, so you're never going to reach that. You're never going to look like happy as a hallmark. Hall of Fame card, you know, presents, you know what I mean? I mean, no one's lived those Christmas pit scenes, but you have them in your head, so there's like terrible disappointment in those days because they were presented as being, oh, you know, filial love and shit like that, but fucking not food fights and fucking you, whatever, yeah, so there's something going on. So presupposing a non-existent thing, wanting to get salvation for a non-existent thing. If this is the case, and obviously because he states it so much, it must be, yeah, in most cases, it must be the basis. So there's an identification as the non-existent thing, so let's say, the animation would be seen as the hand and the glove is the non-existent thing and the hand goes in the glove and it suddenly forgets it's a hand and starts living as a glove. There's some kind of confusion there, yeah? And even when it gets sick and tired or feelings, feels unhappy about being a glove, it tries to become something other than a glove as a glove, yeah? The identification sticks. It doesn't switch to a simple solution, hey, you're the hand. What what could if you what ha would happen if, if the hand hit you? You could just pull your hand out. It's not locked in there. It's not sewed. It's just animating, and it could just oh, take off. Then maybe go back, but then it would travel lighter as a glove. That's been my experience. Yeah, doesn't mean you you know all not gloves are negated or you know they appear, but now you're not you're not that appearance. So the hand, yeah, yeah, the hand. So. All right, so they says, all right, if this is the case, then your spiritual practices, I hate to break the news to people, but most of the people have heard it, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the non-existent thing. Yeah, so the non-existent thing that's causing you to want to seek salvation for it, or relief, or whatever, some desires, is the exact thing that's producing all the unease. <laughs> So, yeah, it's going to amplify it. So the more you try to get out of an imaginary place, the more in it seems to be real. Yeah, because of the power that we are. We really are the dreaming of this place. It's not a place, we're dreaming. We, and like the Course would say, we're giving everything all the meaning it has. That's a pretty incredible statement. I think someone's at the door, yeah. Yes, come on in, come on in, honey, yeah, it's open. Uh, yes, so I'm just wanting to see if anyone follows, because you know, uh, I don't know why, I just feel like it's helpful. I mean, to me, when I saw this, uh, it was like, a, you know, walking into a spiritual shoe store with my ideas, I want to get, you know, the loving gaze laces, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> nice tread for Tibet and shit, and then these things were put out and say, hey, all your trips to the bed are reinforcing that you're in fucking New Haven, New Jersey, or New Connecticut. That's so, but you're wanting to get to bed, you're more in fucking New Haven than ever. What? Yeah. So it says, your spiritual practices themselves are reinforcing the thing, the exact thing that seems to be causing you the angst to try to get out of it. So, yeah, that's incredible. And he says it so many times. So in this one, he says, he says it quite similarly. Let me see. He says, you impose, now you isn't you, yeah, in a sense. You allow impositions or imposing, but it says, you impose limitations on your true nature of infinite being. What? You know, <laughs> that's what he's stating. And then weep that you are but a finite creature, yeah. Then you take up this or that spiritual practice to, to, to transcend the non existent limitations, yeah? So if the, if the limitations are non-existent, then you're actually in the inherent transcendence of them because they don't exist. <laughs> so you don't have the fun of transcending, it's more of an inherent condition, yeah? See, this is the dilemma. The mental state likes to become, it doesn't, I'm not into being much, you know? Just, I can't get much of a shine off of that. But becoming is a fucking noble endeavor. So, so, 
then you take up this or that spiritual practice to transcend the non-existent limitations. It makes sense until you see you're not, you know, your role in it, yeah? You're not the goal. You're not the goal. <laughs> so then you take up this or that spiritual practice to transcend the non-existent limitations. But if your practices itself assumes the existence of the limitations, how can it help you to transcend them? This is, he says it like 80 different ways. This is like a fundamental knot that most spirituality to become a business has to for the forego looking at this because it would question stuff because your own activities to get out may be reinforcing the idea of being in, that's all. And I don't think, it doesn't say, uh, there isn't like a missing of this scripture. It doesn't say, this is only important to Bill, Steve, Mary, Sue, <laughs> like a certain number. No, it's just basically saying, all minds, this is what happens. So it's sort of what locks you into the system is wanting to get out of the system. Now, I had no idea of that at all while I was trying to get out of the system. Yeah, I didn't know that my wanting to get out of the system or attempting to get out of it was producing the reality of being in it. I had no fucking idea. And doing a lot of practices weren't clearing that up. They weren't. I, I had to hear it from some outside source, or what we call it, non-duality or whatever. And then in hearing it, it's like the shoe they put on uh, just pictured all the, all the shoes I wore, all the spiritual shoes I wore, that I traveled all those continents and sitting on my ass for 13 hours a day. And, they, and I saw this just fit perfectly. It was sort of like uh, loose fitting handcuffs that never come off. Okay, I'm guilty. <laughs> this exactly describes what I, I seem to have been doing most of my life. Yeah. It's trying to get out of what I can't be in. And they're just trying to say, all right, I'm going to say it again. So you impose limits on your true nature. How do you do that? By thinking, really. Yeah, the system thinks, and the system thinks about things, and thinks a lot about this thing. And then it comes up with a lot of stuff and ideas. So some people, they have this desire to be right about how wrong they are. So then they look at a lot of what's happening in life to prove how wrong they are. And it goes on and on. And there's a lot of different hand feints, but that's the theme, you know? And then other people just have a, I'm not, I'm not lovable because, you know, I did something, whatever. You're exiled from a lot of possibility, yes? So you're constantly uh, making up limitations that aren't true because the limitations are after them, yeah? In this, in this situation, you're never on the other side of the sun. You're on the sun side. So the clouds that can seem to block you from the sun when you're here have no relevance. To, they don't have that ability, though they're appearing because you're on this side and you're inherently on this side and you can only be thought to be on this side. Yeah, and then suddenly clouds and all these things that happen in life seemingly have the ability to block you off from the sunlight of the spirit. So then basically you're moved to try to, you know, go cloud track, you know, move those clouds, you know, try to get as much as possible. Yeah. And the seeking, it just generates itself. Yeah. Because then hope arises and hope allows you not to see the evidence that nothing's really fucking changing. You're just hoping it will. And, you, and again, also, the mental state has invested a lot in the travel, the journey. And so it doesn't really want to give up. It doesn't want to lose face, yeah? Just like the time I was in that uh, sweat. And uh, man, I can't believe it. The first sweat I ever went to. And it was a big time sweat. It happened like once a year. I mean, people who were in the sweats came from all over Canada, and um, some of them drove up in Hollies, and they read, oh, there's Harry, and famous dudes, and I didn't know anyone. They had the Indian there. They did set up the sweat. They have the fucking shit going. I'm standing in the tent with tons of people, not a tent, they build it, and I couldn't get sit down. Someone was sitting right underneath my ass. So heat rises, so I'm holding on the rafters, and I cannot believe Man, my, this was getting burnt, my nose inside, my ears. 
I fucking, but I wasn't going to leave because I would have been the talk of the fucking whole sweat. Well, there's the guy who ran out of this tent. So I was, I died to see my spiritual face. I'm not leaving. But I had to get a strategy next time, and that was sit right next to the flap so I can get out as soon as the fucking thing's done. But, but, <laughs> see, so there was, there's investment. The mental state has an investment in being a spiritual person, let's say, yes? And so it's that really co-ops it, in a way, if you have any kind of affiliation with the head, it's gonna hold you back when a solution comes, when the obviousness of the failedness of what you've been doing arises. Yeah, there'll be a hit of it, but there'll be a cover-up, yeah? Because the head just wants to keep on, because it's getting a nice shine. I mean, a spiritual person, to me, gets a lot more shine, not more attention, but a lot more shine than a drug addict, yeah. A drug addict gets a lot of attention from unwarranted, it's like police and authorities, but the shine off for a spiritual person is pretty good, yeah. yeah. So therefore, you know, I don't really want to, I have a solution, you know, it's gonna take me lifetimes, that's comfy. You know what I mean, no rush, just keep on vigilance, working, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to know that it's already available at all times, right where I am. No. So again, here, he says, you impose the limitations on your true nature of infinite being, and then weep that you are but a finite creature. And then a lot of other seeming finite creatures will listen, and then we sort of have a big, we share it, almost like an infection, yes? <laughs> yeah. Then you take up this or that spiritual practice to transcend the non-existent limitations, yeah. But if you're a sadhana itself, just look at what happened when we were young. Did you ever think of getting into the moment when you were young? Because you can't be out of the moment. You, you hadn't entertained that insane idea. I wasn't sitting at three years old. Gotta get into the fuck. <laughs> so it's just, it was just, I, and I wasn't in a violent situation, so I wasn't trying to get out of the moment. Yeah, I could do no, you know. And the idea that, you know, worrying about playing next week, I had no next week. I wasn't time hadn't really set up shop yet. Yeah. So these insane ideas came. They we came to believe them. They weren't the state that we've been in, seemingly. Yeah. They came. We came to believe them, and then they started to have. They, again, we, we believe the limitations that we made, and one of them is we, we're out of the moment. We can be out of the moment. You know, I can do something sufficiently enough to exile me from the moment. What's that? But something's playing God, yeah. And it's telling you you're out of the moment. And if you believe it, there's that belief, then what are you going to do? I'll pay, I'll try to get in the moment. And then suddenly, there'll be a, just like if you have a hernia, you know. The next day on your Facebook, on your fucking page, on the internet, there'll be hernia belt ads. So somehow <laughs> the news gets out, yeah? And so the same thing. If there's a belief you're out of the moment, there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna show you how to get in the moment, you know? It's usually for cash or something. But there's gonna be a business, you know? Because there'll be a business of getting into the moment. But you can't be out of the moment. Have you ever, ever, straight beyond here and now, really. You know, we think here and now is different in time, but it's still another here and now. See, if you arrive somewhere else later, when you arrive there, it's here and now. I mean, you can't escape here and now. You'd have to, but there's an assumption we can, so that's a, sort of like a limitation, like he's talking about. And you could come up with some, and maybe if you'd ask yourself, well, who is it that believes that limitation? And then it says, well, it's me. Well, who's this me? And see where it comes from, yeah. If it's not you, then you're not beholden to it, really. If it's you, there's investment in it. If you identify it as it, there's a huge investment portfolio for that idea. If you're, it's not, you can just sort of open up and it will reconfigure, yeah? Just like it happened with, uh, with many of us. It was so absurd that I could be out of a moment, I've always been in the moment ever since then. Because, not because I've learned how to get in, I can't be out. <laughs> it's just it's such a much faster way. I mean, it's so much faster to, <laughs> only, 
how long does it take to leave an imaginary place? No time at all. This is no time. And the vigilance or the endeavor would reinforce it's real. So you can't use, just like they say in that famous Zen thing, faith mind, in one of the translations, it says you can't use activity to reduce stillness. That would be activity. This is a, that's the dilemma. Yeah. Now you can put, you can, you know, paint fucking legs on that snake and put lipstick on the pig, but you can't get over the fact. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna. This is what we're. This is what not we are doing, but we're at the effect of all this doing, and we're also at the effect of the identification as what you're not is so quick. I just don't, I have not seen a process that can beat it. It's the quickest thing. It happens, I don't know, maybe one second, two seconds, three seconds, yeah? But it's already claimed to be the meditator when you're getting your pillow ready. I mean, it's, it beats, it, you know, you can't outdraw it because it's that fast, yeah? So how are you going to beat that process? You can't beat it in time, obviously, because it seems to be the fastest one. It's so fast, you don't even know it's happened. Yeah. So the only possibility is timelessness. Yeah. And that's what we are. We're inherently not of time. Yeah. What we are. So in this case, as a gunslinger, this always has its gun out. It can't lose a, a gunfight in time. Yeah. Because time is like, get ready. But see, it's always ready because it's out of time. So, so, so that's the solution is not to find to see that, or just entertain the possibility that freedom is before bondage, yeah? That the salvation from a non-existent thing is inherent, obviously. You wouldn't call it salvation because there would be a non-existent thing you need to call it salvation from, but it's the same same. You're, you're looking for an inherent state as a conditional effect. If I do enough shit, I'll get out of the non-existent thing and then I'll be in what? in that salvation. But if it's not existing, then you are in that salvation. Yeah, but you don't call it salvation because there's no from to be saved from. You're just that. So the, the, the relief is inherent, yeah? Inherent, meaning it's there before conditions and circumstances arise. It's not touched. Its condition isn't based on other conditions, yeah? Which is what's happening here. In like in in, a, in a conservative Buddhism, they call it dependent origination. So everything ori depends on every other thing to seemingly originate. Well, not the inherent state. Yeah, it doesn't, and it's not of time, so it can't be drawn by. It can't be beat. So you'll see what used to produce the someone that's looking. You'll see it. You'll see it. Hopefully, by hearing about it, you'll see it sometimes. Just like when I got those spiritual shoes it revealed like exactly what it, they were stating. It went over a scan like 20 years of my life and it all fit under that one statement. Yes, you've been trying to get out of you as you. Yeah, <laughs> like in AA we say, you know, self can't get out of self. Hey, I was guilty of that. I wasn't, there's no I, it was, it was guilty. It, it was intimate. As soon as I heard it, it explained a huge amount. And it led me really to a this, these ideas, what it hatched in this event was like the last answer, really, which is a damn good answer, especially in spirituality, because spirituality likes to use the word intensive, radical, extreme, fucking, you know, they try to juice it up, yes, but see, in non-duality, there's no newsletter, at what's new in non-duality 2019, it's the fucking same, 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 Imitation. There's no add-ons or subtractions. Radical non-duality. Where? <laughs> How can you you, this, you you can't put attachments on it. It's no thing. <laughs> Let's fucking arm it. Let's arm non-duality. No, it's very disarming. Yeah, is it? When it when it lands, it doesn't pro promote agitation. It'll promote mental agitation, but it doesn't move what we are. It, it disarms it. You just sort of, you know, and then you see, well, you'll see a lot. And hopefully it will, it will stabilize, at least, you know, grab a little of your turf 
And then you'll see the, the effects of these ideas by you'll be traveling lighter where you most need it in here. Yeah? You don't have to travel lighter in light. That's all you're fucking as light as you can be. But here where it can seem to be forgotten, it's, a good, it's nice to have this very clear because this ain't, it's not clear because you have different conditions. Just flying in here, you know, after I spent a week telling everyone in London and Dublin how beautiful Northern California is, this is worse than any day I was over there. Fuck, it was like worse than Dublin. It's freezing here. You know what I mean? So this is sort of like, uh, it's just so, so, if there would be like a, 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 te a, a sect of Buddhism that was based on slackers, this would be it. Like laying, laying down Buddhism. Because it really, it doesn't promote much and it's so fucking K. That's the cool thing. You don't need any rationalization or anything like that. It's just basically stop and see what's going on. And if the shoe fits, wear them. And they will lead you to other shoes, yeah? And then you can, it's so, you know, you are before time. You can sense it. You really can and once you get a flavor of it and can recognize it, usually you can see it, what it is, by seeing what it's not. So you'll see time, you'll, you can feel it. You can feel it. It's like a dry current. You can't, you're not getting wet, but you can feel it after it's been noticed. Yeah? Once you notice it, you see the influence of time, and you see how important it is in this message, because the supposing of being someone is presupposed. Yeah? And if you want to look at a diagram, it's sort of like, in reality, the verb comes first, and all there is is verbing. In the interpretation, the verb is claimed to imply a noun, and suddenly the noun comes first. Yeah? So then life is all about you. When, when you were young, maybe you saw life as happening, but now you're seeing it, actually looking, that life's happening to you. Yeah? So the verbing of life has been claimed to imply the noun. So here it is, verbing, just simple. Verbing, mental state, becomes cognizant of it, whatever, you know, becomes conscious of it. The mental state says, oh, that verb implies there's a noun. Anytime it sees any doing, it uses it to imply a doer, yeah? If it ain't you and it ain't me, it's God. It's always some fucking cause, yeah? So. That's its logic. You don't waste any time trying to change its source code as its source code. You're not going to do yourself out of it, yeah? So you see it. So the verbing, so you can see it in your basis right now. Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Yeah, I may have left my keys at home, left my fucking wallet, but the seeing. <laughs> Can't lose that. <laughs> because it's before the character that I can lose shit. It's not a shit to lose, it's there, yeah. Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. They're all verbing, yes? Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. Mental state, ooh, seeing implies a seer, yeah? And how it gets the hit on that, it's the scene. So suddenly you're in a dualistic presentation. That's what they, that's all that non-duality is saying. There's not two. There is no two. That's what non means, not, and duality means two. The whole message of non-duality isn't about a one, it's just a not two. So when you see this idea of subject and noun, right, subject, object, so the scene would be the object, and you're always cast as the subject, you're the scene. But it's not, see, the scene would give you a, a, a lightness, yeah? But you're the seer, yeah, which is different. So now the seer, seeing, gets emphasized, and what gets underemphasized is the seeing, that's all, yeah? Like in the Course it says, uh, in denying what you are, no one's sitting here going, denying what I am, no. But firm in faith in what you're not is the way there's a denying of what you are. So firm in faith in what we're not is the act of denying what we are, yeah? If you change the sentence, it would make more sense. Sentence says, denying what we are and firm in faith in what we're not. Well, it's firm in faith in what we're not is the denying of what we are. That's, it's an act, it's an activity, yeah? So seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. There's the verbing, 
I've seen it, you know. You don't have to see it zillions of times. If you see it a few times, it does a hundred monkey syndrome, and you're pretty much sure the formula doesn't vary much. It has different degrees and different amounts of numbers, but it's the same formula. So there's the verbing, there's the claiming to imply the noun. The noun comes after the verbing. It's presupposed to be before the verbing, and now you're thinking you're doing the self. That's it. So that's the robbery. And it's in time, so if you see, because we're conditioned to believe time is linear. We are. As action figures, we think there was time in the past. Yeah. There's present time, which we're really not that into. The thought system isn't anyway. It's using now to think about yes, see tomorrow. So you can you know my don't listen to anything it says, just look at what it does. The thoughts are happening now about yes, see tomorrow. Don't you don't need to it's just like if a, we used to tell the story about an alien comes to the planet and they have a, they got a 10 year research program to come and visit, let's say Americans, yeah. They get here, in five minutes they call back planet whatever, Venusia, and they say, well, we're all done. They go, what do you mean? You got 10 years, fucking study away. He said, no, we already got all we need to know. Any society that has profit over health is insane. I don't fucking care what. You know, I don't care how safe it looks up here, the premise is fucked, fucked, really, and it is, yeah? So you don't need to have tons of research, you just see it. You see it, and then it's just entertain, and it's just 100 monkeys, and they're peeing. You've Now you can recognize, because it's mechanical, it is. Verbing is living, yes? Yeah, that's the pulse. You verb, you living is an interpretation, that's all, yeah? If the interpretation's great, the you that's made up by it is not going to give it up. Most people are totally uninterested in fucking this. They want to change the story, but they don't want to change the, the, the star of the story. Yeah. They want to be there to get it, and especially spirituality. Yeah. But sometimes, maybe, if there is a requirement, that could be seen as one, but there isn't. But maybe a disillusionment is quite healthy. Like the Course would say, what can a failed system show you? It's failed. It's an incredible value. Yeah. If you saw that which you've been relying on has failed, maybe you'd be open to other possibilities. And then what, if that was the case, what you need to learn is how the system closes in on itself and does it allow you out. It'll give you a lot of rope, but you don't go anywhere. In, your, in its world, the exits are entrances. Yeah? You're thinking you're getting out, but you're actually reinforcing the idea you're in. Yes, so you get caught in a sense, and this to me is what satsang at a certain point is, it's warnings. You're warning about the pit typical pitfalls of how the, that claiming idea of being a you is going to close up and reinforces itself. It will use itself to try to get out of itself knowing that's more being in itself than ever. Yes? So this is why I think Ramana put such an emphasis on this, because it's in a lot of the people who wrote about his teachings, this is in it. I had another one about surrender. They say the same fucking thing, but in different words, yeah? So I don't see that many other things he said in so many different words, the same, same idea. I would say, and it was always the greatest mystery, reality, wanting to attain reality, yes? How would that ever get off the ground? Reality would have to be believing it's not real, obviously, or it has to be, maybe it's a small bit of reality, it has to get to the large reality, or maybe it's like a little flame of the eternal fire, or whatever, however it presents itself. But there has to be some identification as something that, so that reality can seemingly forget that it's reality to the point it's looking for itself. Yes? There has to be. There's got to be an activity that keeps reality believing it's something else that puts it in a different position and in reality looks really desirous from Paul. But all the while, Paul's reality. So when Paul starts looking for reality with other Steve, Mary, Jims, every, they'll be rooting you on, yes, but they actually rather get there before you, but goes, yes, Jim, Paul, Mary. But in fact, they're reinforcing the same mistake, yeah, because you are reality. So why not, instead of looking to attain reality, why not look at what you're not? Just check it out. Because if you're not that, then all bets are off. Yes? If you're not that, you'll find out what's available. When, now, where, here. Yes? You'll find out. 
Yeah, you don't have to be sold a, pri a, a bill of goods or like a way a lay, you know, lay away plan. You'll just you'll have, like Buddha said, he checked out his own laboratory, so to speak. They didn't have labs then, but he was looking in his own freaking event, and he came to a lot of conclusions. That's because they're there, right? Yeah. So okay. So there has to be an identification seemingly going on, so that reality it would make sense to attain reality, wouldn't it, yes? Or like Hawaiian Po says, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Now why would, would he say that to anyone other than the Buddha? I don't think so, you know? He's looking at Jim, Mary, Bill, and Sue, but he's not seeing Jim, Mary, Bill, and Sue. He's seeing the Buddha, AKA Jim, Mary, Bill, and Sue. He's probably realized that it goes nowhere talking to Mary about the Buddha, so let's try to get to the Buddha about Mary. <laughs> What's that movie? What's up about Mary? Whatever. So let's, let's talk to the Buddha about Mary. Yes? Because if the Buddha questions the idea of Mary, it will go, hey, maybe I'm not that. If Mary starts questioning the Buddha, it just makes, it makes a bigger Mary. <laughs> because it's the Buddha. Yes? So it's when you're losing when it's when the Buddha is using the Buddha to seek the Buddha. It's actually obviously reinforcing the idea that it's not the Buddha. That's that's the point. So he says he covers three bases. He says the Buddha you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. Okay. Can't use mind to seek mind. Whoa, wait a minute. Can't use light to seek light. So I would imagine, in his view, your light Buddha mind, whatever they call whatever it is, you are that. So you can't use that to find that. Yeah, fundamental beginning, and it can be the end. It's either the beginning, and then it's usually the end. <laughs> because it's gonna just fucking pull the plugs out of a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, you'll be looking for what you can find, like, you know, a good sandwich, latte today, I'm hoping to be successful. But then I'll have a good success rate, but you won't be looking for what can't be found. No fucking way. I mean, like in Zen, they say blue will be blue, red will be red. Yes, you'll be, clarity will arise. Yes, not by polishing. That, this, this mirror doesn't need any polishing. It's, just, it's fucking bright and clear as ever. Yeah? <laughs> you just want to move your big head polishing the mirror out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of seeing you all day polishing the mirror, you can see everything or nothing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's the whole point of the message, at least today, to now. And you can beat it overhead. We've been saying it for so many years. Guess I just don't feel moved to go anywhere else. I just don't think it's. It's appropriate. You you can't because the lock will lock. As soon as you start using you to get out of you, it's just more you. Yeah. So if that worked for you guys, I know it has for some people here, it's very disarming. And then maybe you'll find, like what I found as observation is, um, hmm, acceptance. Yeah, acceptance for what I'm not. And I remember I felt very accepted when I was young with my grandma, Nana. I mean, she poured tons of love on me when I was a kid, you know? And then she died suddenly. So it seemed like that possibility was gone. And then uh, this scene as being real, it demanded a lot of work. Because, you know, as real, I felt like there was a lot of fault in it. But seeing that it's not me, it really, ended that budget of the urban renewal project mm -hmm. it just got canceled mm -hmm. and then the body basically the body has been corrected enough through recovery i mean i'm not burning houses or doing shit like that i don't need that much correction yeah i needed basic corrections aa has provided it and gave me a way of life so this thing can you know like guardrails stay on the straight and narrow though it's rather pretty broad and large like free range really but this needed to be corrected what I am doesn't need any correction. What I'm not, yes? That's already happened. So then what occurred was I started feeling like this thing just was okay, you know, before it got to be okay. 
or it had memories it was once okay, or that drive of I will be okay, it was okay without any add-ons or subtractions. And then, you know, you don't have to give things name, but then I realized it's acceptance. I hadn't been in that space for a long time, and the last time I was in it, it was seemed to be from a, a person, yeah, my grandmother. That just felt, it brought me to tears in Ireland. I just felt it. To uh, be so assured, reassured, that you can put it all down. You can just let it be what it looks like. Even if it looks so many ways off from you, you don't question that so much. You question that. You question who is it? Like the whole idea of self-inquiry isn't about uh, going over the importance or the wasting of importance of worrying about next week. It's just to ask who is it that's worrying about next week. Next week is supplemental. It doesn't matter. It's just trying to use the old trick, just, you know, look at our bodies, the eyes are here, everything's in the front, yeah? We're projected out, no, aren't we? We are, we live out. Very little contact, you know? You could have a big wad of gum in your hair in the back, you probably wouldn't notice it unless someone did it, unless, you could, unless, you know, I don't comb it much, so it'd be there for weeks, you know, you wouldn't know, but here, you can see like at the tiniest pimple looking like Mount Everest when I was a kid. I used to close one eye before I went to school. <laughs> if I had one higher than like a millisecond, I would be trying to get out of going to school. I can't go to school. <laughs> Everyone's going to see it. No one fucking noticed anything. <laughs> but you see, we're out, yeah? So attention seems to be out. Yes, yeah. So it's nice every once in a while you can ask and not. The topic doesn't matter. Oh, I, I fucked up last week. That's not important. Who is it that fucked up last week? And who is it that's now fucked up about last week? Yeah, just ask and then you go, well, me, the assumption is it me? And then you just ask it a second time. Hey, who's this me? Well, it's no hard, not hard. So you may, like on a typical day, Maybe you need it five times, really. You know, I don't, he, in the past, they were doing it all the time. This is America, you know, just use it for the skills. Put, throw the wrench in the work, let at least get a little relief, you know, and then if, go on, and then you know, if you see it, and it's getting into the topic that seems to be the cause of all your trouble, which has nothing to do with it, it's you, well, and then it turns around. So you get a sense of the attention turning around. Yeah, and going to back to the subject. Now, when the, it goes back to the subject, it will, hopefully will cut through by the questioning the, the happy face billboard of you, and then it goes to the real, the real subject, not the pseudo subject, Paul, the doer, the thinker, but really the subject, yeah? And then that interest and attention, that's of its nature. You don't see interest or your attention. It's of that, yeah? So then it can find great rest there. Come back out, yeah? Go back, come back out, go back. Not come back out, go back out, come back. Because this is out, yeah? You see it. This is, and the brain isn't out. In The brain's out. This is all out, yeah? So we're, we've been in this self-centered loop of out. And this whole thing is like breathing, you know, duality. In, out, pumping, blah, blah, blah. So it was nice when the attention can go into no thing, break through your little billboard, and then go back out and enrich your day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so if, you, if you're having trouble with anything, ask who is it that's having trouble with anything. That's all. It's a typical thing. And, you know, I don't like talking about it, but. I think I'm falling into a trap ultimately. I'm starting to feel compassion for people. And I said, fuck it, throw them a bone. Here, this will help you. Yeah, just ask who it is. And if it isn't you, I'm telling you, you'll lose interest in it. Because all the interest is in it because of you. Truly. Or you also, you can, you can see this. The meaning of things comes from the you not from the things. The things are inherently empty, as they'd say in Buddhism, right? Everything is inherently empty. But there's the dreaming, and the dreaming, dreaming is giving meaning to things through, let's say, the bridge of my, yeah, yeah? This is my, this is my, this is my. A lot of meaning gets injected into the thing from that, yeah? 
And then the thing seems like it brings it to you. And then you're feeling like imposed upon or fucking crazy. But no, you really, the meaning came from us. And then it went into the thing through the mind. And then the thing gets delivered and we feel like, fuck, I didn't ask for this, but whatever, yeah? But the mind, so if you have a thought and you have my thought, we used to use the old thing, let's say a thought weighs an ounce, yeah? And then you have like, maybe you're conscious of 2,000 thoughts a day, probably much more, let's say 5,000. So maybe it'd be a certain weight, but you've been traveling with that weight, it seems like it's normal, yeah? Because you've have you've never had it off, so you can't really tell what it's like beyond. But you could tell if the, if the thoughts that you've been holding are, are a pound each. So the mind would be what's giving the poundage, yeah? So now you have a thousand pounds on you, and then you can feel it. Because the hundred I always seem to be there, I don't notice it. Thousand, you notice it, so then, fucking drinking, there's a lot more drive to try to get out of it and try to control and manage, and of course it produces more meaning, yes? And so, and everyone goes, well, I gotta stop thinking. Well, try that, yeah. <laughs> it's just wild goose chases people go on. Just see if they're your thoughts. If they're not your thoughts, you'll lose interest in them. You will, and then it, when you lose interest in them, you'll see where the bank of interest lies. It's us. <laughs> We're lending our reality to things all fucking day. It has to happen for the dreaming, but it's gone overboard so much. You can back off a little and you'll travel later, yes? So let's say instead of 3,000 thoughts held as yours, maybe 187, you'll be traveling fucking later through the fucking hailstorm of thoughts. <laughs> you will. And the same thing with feelings, yeah? Most feelings aren't even really, they're sensations, yeah? They don't, they can go unnoticed, they're fine, they're like little blips. But my feeling, you know, thou, oh, but my feeling, they're almost as if they start orbiting around this imaginary you. And then the imaginary you is like a gravitational pull that keeps them in the orbit, yeah? And then you're wanting to really fucking get out of there now. And in a way, the asteroids are so thick with meaning, they seem to almost become like a thick wallish ring. You can't see fucking anything, yeah, really. Yeah, and you, all you need to do is see, if you could see some space between the thoughts, that space would bring a lightness and the, the, it's blocked by the my. You know, the my is like hiding the uh, space between thoughts, really. Yeah, the my. So the same thing with my feelings, that it's hiding the space because it's putting a story. So the thought reminds you of a past thought. Yeah, and then it provokes a fear of another, a future feeling like that, yes? So it, it's sort of like they're separate and suddenly they extend and they make a little wall, past, present, future. Fuck, I want to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. And so you're not seeing this, you're not sensing the space. It's all, you know, put these things, all the minds everywhere. Yeah. So the mind is, that can drop. Yeah. That's not what's happening. That's a, that's a supplemental. Yeah. There's more possibility in this being uh, affected. Maybe you can't not have thoughts, but you can definitely probably experience a, a lessening of the mind if you just notice. Yeah? Yes, we are light. You know, we are the power. And so if that if what we are comes to a situation, it can clear it can see things clearly, yeah? Yeah, and then you'll travel lighter. And then what happens is you're onto something. Oh, so you don't fucking, it's not the thoughts so much anymore, it's the ownership of them. And then the tree, you'll know the tree and its authenticity by the fruit it, it produces. If you're starting to travel lighter, let the investigation continue. So wait a minute. So then you could bring it to the Course in Miracle that, hey, you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. How are we doing a lot of that is through mind, right? Wow. Yeah. So, all right. And then it says, all right, we're the dreaming of the dreaming. Wow, because a lot of times people would say you're in a dream and it's God's dream or whatever. But the Course says you are actually the dreaming of the dreaming, which is a big role, yeah? And 
what's happening is we're forgetting or seemingly it's appearing to the dreaming that it's forgotten it's dreaming again how yeah not by forgetting it's dreaming but by being identified as a dreamt it facilitates the forgetting by being identified as an object that's all it's not out there forgetting it's identify and then the result is it seems to forget that it's dreaming because it takes it's like the big camera looking through the brownie the cheap little <coughs> camera forgets it's the big camera and all of its qualities and it's now contained by the small qualities of the brownie and causing a lot of disease and irritability to the point where it will try to improve the brownie spending thousands of dollars to buy Nikon lenses, but you're gonna put it on the brownies plastic lens, it's gonna negate the 5000 HD of the beautiful Nike, because what's before the Ni Nike, not Nike, Nikon. Nikon lens is the plastic <laughs> lens. So it doesn't matter what you put on after, it's not gonna change the plastic, so you're gonna get a brownie picture. And why the hell would you fucking pay all that money if you weren't the brownie, yeah? If you, if you saw you weren't the brownie, you wouldn't be shopping for $5,000 Nikon lenses for it. You'd be enjoying the 5,000 Nikon lens you got already. <laughs> you just have to question, am I the fucking brownie camera? Yeah. If not, what? Well, it doesn't have to oh, pull it apart. It just, it's like the hand comes out of the glove. The glove isn't like super tight fitting. <laughs> you know, you pull out. And then you see, then suddenly, instead of looking from the brownie, yeah, because you're so into it, you see it. See, so you go, wow, you don't hate it. Oh, I'm not that. No, it's, you know, it's factual. I'm not that. It's, you know, you you have qualities that are not of the brownie, and then they become available in your life. Yeah, suddenly, also, like the lion doesn't take three months to learn how to roar when it realizes it's not a sheep, it roars immediately, yeah? It hadn't roared as a sheep all those years, but it didn't mean he lost the ability to roar, it just wasn't accessing it, because he was trying to access it as a sheep, and the sheep's already barring, so the roaring's gonna have to do a lot of work to turn into a, a bar into a roar. <laughs> and when it's afraid, it'll always get it back into the barring. So the roar's not gonna help in dire situations. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You see, so the camera, the whole message, the whole direction, in my humble opinion, is to see what you're not, learn about what you're not, hear about what you're not, understand what you're not. Not applying all of those to what you are. You can't understand what you are, you can only be it. You can't study what you are, you can be it. You can't experience what you are, you can be it. Yeah, being it is not an experience. Being it is way beyond an experience. <laughs> Experiences come and go. <laughs> being it doesn't. Yeah, so, yeah, it just makes, it's just a simple correction. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, see what, how it fits. It's been fitting well, so just, um, just keep entertaining the idea. Because you're not. The mind's entertaining. The mind is on fire all fucking day. It's entertaining this. Yeah. It's entertaining all day. None of this would seem real unless it seemed real to what we are. None of it. It has no reality in and of itself. It's lent reality by us. Yeah. Like it or not. Yeah. So, what happened? Hey, it's a lot of work for what comes and goes. You know, can you imagine spending... Like people, some people, maybe they're make, trying to make the body the best it can be. Yeah, it's cool, but it's going to die inevitably, you know? So it's how great of an investment is it in a way? I'd like it to have a certain quality of life and maintain it, but I don't want to become a super man at 75 and then die 76, you know? All that fucking work, I got a half a year enjoying superman This It seems like a weird deal. 50 fucking years of effort, half a year of fucking, you know? So inevitably, all the work that's being put into this is gonna, you know, come up zero, so to speak, yeah? You know, I mean, the extra sketch is going to be shook and it's going to be wiped out. So I don't know. I don't want to spend too many lines on it. You know, just get it to a certain state if you can. You know, hopefully you don't have 
weird shit happen, like diseases and everything, if you're lucky. And then just maintain it. Why, you know, to me, to maintain blood pressure through meditation, like 10 minutes a day, not 13 hours a day. If you're meditating 13 hours, you're thinking you're going somewhere. You do. There's no way you're going to... For maintenance, you're not working 13 hours to maintain. <laughs> Just not. So I must have thought I was this and wanting to, and I thought I was going to transcend as this and get out of all my troubles as this. And that motivated me to sit for 13 hours. Now that I see that, I wouldn't sit for 25 minutes. <laughs> because I know I'm not going anywhere. Why would I? <laughs> as soon as my left cheek hurt, I'd get up. Huh, that's enough. <laughs> the fucking sky doesn't fall on you. It's okay. You're playing God. You set up all the rules yourself anyway. You're trying to convince you of something. You're not trying to convince God, right? Mm-hmm. You're know, trying to convince yourself. And you know what? It's not convincible. It's dualistic. So it can be convinced and unconvinced every day. To, to believe with certainty doesn't come from here. It comes from the innermost, wherever that may be. It's not from here. This can't believe with certainty about anything, in a sense. It's so very, very flipping and floppy because it's dualistic, yeah? Totally believe, fucking what? No, no, there's no, yeah. So, why waste time, really? Why waste time? See, if there's a seesaw and you're working on this, yeah, <laughs> to be that, and then you go there, you can't, you're never gonna get it the way you want. It's defined, you know what I mean? There's an already a definition. You can't get out of it like a Chinese thumb torture. Yeah, you can't get out of it because, see, it's you giving everything all the thing you have. So once you see, oh, I don't like that, it gets bigger and bigger in a way. The way the escape becomes the fucking weird prison. And a lot of people don't know that. They don't see these common little mistakes. And then the masters say them, they put them in, say them in a lot of different freaking ways, and they try to proceed it with importance, like the problem or the greatest mystery, with the hopes that it was, you would stop, like with your intent, I'm gonna read this whole book, how about that sentence, you know what I mean? Like in AA, we get people go, uh, how many meetings should I attend? This one would be good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Stop planning your 90 day, how about right here? <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, that's always escaping us. We're always living for a future goal. No. Yeah. All right, well, that's that. Uh, any questions? No? Good. All right, uh, let's pass the basket. Can you grab one over there? And we're